In today's Retro Style Spotlight, we'll take a look at a few RetroArch updates that are here and upcoming, an awesome English patch for a Japanese exclusive Mario game, modders going crazy in Super Mario 64, and much more, all on today's edition of RSS. Thank you to all my patrons who are helping make this show a reality. If you'd like to help support me and do this and many new ventures, check out the various ways that you can pledge and donate in the description below. Being a solo creator on their own, every dollar matters. A special thank you to my patrons at the producer level role and above, Alex Dubois, Draconis, Karen Storms, Twistar, Gregory Contoy, and Exo. Yes, that Exo. In this week's emulator roundup, I mostly want to focus on RetroArch and the updates that it's been pushing out. The PPSS PP Core should now be updated to about or exactly on par with a standalone version. A new Hygen Core is in the works, and the RetroArch team is doing what they can to help the relationship between the two projects as it's been strained over time. This will be a core of the Hygen emulator, completely unaltered. Beastness eventually turned into Hygen and it was updated to include more systems as well. On top of that, at the least, at the time of this writing, RetroArch 1.6.8 is on its way as well. OG Xbox and Xbox 360 ports are coming back in the near future, the Supermodel Core is getting a giant bug fix that is currently plaguing it, and a Java J2ME Core is also in the works as well. For those that don't know what Java J2ME is, it's a cell phone emulator. Pretty much. It takes the old cell phone games from the old flip phone style from Japan, Europe, and America and gives them a platform so that you can play them on your PC. The major holdup for this revision is a Wii U bug, as the developers want to make sure that the console versions can stay up to par as the main build moves forward, which is also why, at least to me, it seems like they're working on so many more systems that have fallen by the wayside in recent years like the OG Xbox and Xbox 360 ports. In another emulator update, Melon DS has reached version 0.5 and comes with a new emulator UI and anti-aliasing. This emulator is of special interest to me, even if it is still in such an early state and most games are not playable, as I am hoping it's here to stay and shake up the DS emulation world that desperately needs it. In the ROM hack report this week, First up, I have Wrecking Crew 98 for your playing pleasure. I also want to note too, that more than just English translations get posted. For example, there are several new Spanish patches available this week, but English is my primary language and what I cover the most. Either way, Wrecking Crew 98 is a puzzle game akin to the previous Wrecking Crew games that was only available for the Super Famicom and just recently got its English patch. The game is fully playable from start to finish without any major hiccups or bugs. The translator, Shadow1333, still has a few updates to make, like the credits sequence still using the Japanese names for the characters in English alphabet. An upcoming update will be released to translate these names to their official English names and or change those new characters to proper English punful names. A Mario game that was never seen outside of Japan is kind of rare, so I am very happy this exists. As a bonus too, this also includes the original Wrecking Crew NES game ported from the NES to the SNES. In other ROM hack news, two more MSU1 audio hacks are now available for Castlevania 4 and Rival Turf. The audio for each has been replaced with CD quality audio and is sounding quite amazing as usual. An odd pairing of Castlevania 4, one of the better games on the SNES, and then Rival Turf, also known as Rushing Beat a game most would consider pretty poor. As of right now, Kurono K has compiled a digital soundtrack pack featuring symphonic rearrangements of the game's soundtracks, and you can hear the examples that are linked below. In other news, MAME.190 is out, and as usual, there are quite a few more games that are up and running for this version. The list isn't too long, but instead of going over each and every game and not having the time to make this sort of video myself, though I kind of would like to, check out Definitely Russian below for a quick rundown and some footage of the new titles. I love when modders do insane shit, and putting Majora's Mask inside of Super Mario 64 is quite insane. I found this over at the R Emulation subreddit, and they've stated that the entire overworld is present. Obviously, these two things were never meant to be put together, as there are some graphical glitches and two moons, 
But given some TLC, I wonder if this could bring about some awesome new Super Mario 64 ROM hacks. It's an interesting video to check out, so do so in the description below. For our final big story today, this is a fairly big piece of news, even with a ton of unknowns about this project and the developer. So take everything I'm about to say with a grain of salt. None of this could happen. All of this could happen. Some of this could happen. It could take 10 years. It just keep an open mind. With that being said, Mephisto is a new emulator that is being developed and is a Nintendo Switch homebrew debugger. The developer has also stated that their work on this emulator will never allow for rips of games to be played. It is worth noting, however, that a lot of emulators started this way. Most recently, Citra and RPCS3 did. They were originally just available for homebrew development and debugging, and were later expanded by existing or new developers to allow for users to play their own ripped games. If the Switch is based on Android, like the rumored reports from over a year ago are to be believed, which is likely considering it was cracked within days of it being released from known exploits that are used on cell phones, then it's no surprise that emulator work has already begun. You could probably consider this the groundwork for a Switch emulator. Also, considering the blinding speeds at which Simu and RPCS3 move at, which I never expected to, I do wonder how fast this emulator could be up and running, emulating its first commercial game. So that was Retro Style Spotlight Episode 8. Most everything that you heard about in this episode can be found in the links below in the description. Thank you to all my patrons over at my Patreon campaign. If you'd like to become a patron, you're going to get some exclusive perks, like seeing the script for RSS, watching me record RSS Live, hi guys, and lots of other perks at various levels. I cannot thank every supporter enough. Thumbs up the video if you liked it, thumbs it down if you didn't, and leave me a comment in the comment section below on how you think I could improve this show. Remember, freaks and geeks, to play more games, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day. Take a